Welcome back to the podcast. What's up, guys? What's hey, up, everybody? Hey, gentlemen. What's up? Happy, Happy Women's who? Month. Happy Women's Month, Lenny. Hey, Happy Women's Month to yeah. you. Obviously, all the ladies that watch the show as well, you know? Yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. We finally yeah. get recognition in this man's world, you know? Let me tell you. Let me tell every, you. Day is, every day is Women's Month. Yes, you don't need recognition from a man. Men and shit, don't worry, bro. No. Do your thing. We don't. We don't need recognition from men. We just need men to realize that we are just as powerful. That's what we want men to realize. Oh, we're just paying rent in it, bro. It's your world. Bro. <laughs> oh, you I, I, I love you guys. I love you guys every month, every day. Not Ooh. just in August, okay? Not, not no. just in the DMs. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, yeah, it is Women's Month. So, of course, it's going to be quite exciting to see what the ladies are going to bring forth for us. I did see this past weekend, Moosley and Rouge did a double up performance on Lockdown House Party. Um, yep. We do know that the ladies always perform together and they've got this energy whenever they jump on stage together, which is really awesome. Um, so, obviously, Rouge did her part, Muzi did her, her part, but then they also then did their, their collaborations together. And it's nice just to, keep, to see that friendship blossoming the way that it is, you know? Yeah. For sure. A lot yeah. of people um, in the game don't last long as friends. And, you know, the industry is famous for ladies and men who kind of like associate with each other for clout and, 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 and press reasons and just to keep your name hot on the streets. You'll be, you meet people, they're friends this week, next week, I dololo. So Same. when Mosley did that, <laughs> that message and it's like five years and running and they've been, and I think Rouge has also been very instrumental uh, for Mosley to see how to be better at this rap thing. Definitely, definitely. I think they feed off of each other because obviously Muzi is very strong brand wise and she knows exactly how to use her brand. But obviously from a music and, and growth yeah. perspective, Rouge also kind of um, uh, mirrors that to no Muzi. So I think they, they complement each other quite well and they use each other to their strengths. And they really are just like real homies. It's not even like yeah. some fake shit. You know, some people will think, ah, they're just doing it for clout. No, they really are homies. So, you know, shout outs to the ladies. And I also saw even uh, Wusiso and, and, and Moonchild also did their collab okay. performance on Lockdown house party some weeks back and they're also like best friends from like way back from back when they both were broke to now where they're both uh-huh. killing the game so it's like really awesome to see that they they still support each other the way they do and yeah. speaking of sorry to just continue with this uh, uh mm-hmm. not, i'm not sorry to continue with it um yo moonchild and and and, and Busi, so weren't they on uh the shandy's got beyonce yeah they were yeah, they no, I, I just saw, um, I also didn't watch it yet, but I just saw like clips on Instagram. I think the song is called Power, Noni. The Power song, I think, was on the Lion King, uh, Lion King um, soundtrack. So that's where, the, that's where they had originally featured. But I think she also featured them on Black is King as well. Unfortunately, I also didn't get a chance to watch it this past weekend, but I, I'm going to make sure that I watch it this week. So that I, at least I can come back with the review yeah. on the next episode so that we can, you know, give a big shout out to the mm-hmm. ladies and their contribution. But when I did have a, a conversation with Moonchild um, on She Social, she did mention how much work she had been putting in internationally. And it's not necessarily only just from a performance perspective, but also just from a songwriting perspective. Maybe even um, if uh, some people just needed some inspiration from Africa from that perspective, she was doing a lot of that. So she's also very involved behind the scenes. So shout out to Moonchild. Nice. Moon, you know? I think tying in with um, like black hair, what's that? No, no, go ahead, Speedy. Uh, I was just saying, I think tying in with uh, Black is King and, you know, I think as black people, us being really conscious and really proud and really loud and really happy about being black. Um, another person uh, I want to give props to is Kid X, uh, mm-hmm. who, 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 got, who got honored by the Ndebele Students Association. Mm-hmm. Um, this past week, which is a pretty big deal. Yeah. Um, because I remember when I was making a lot of music with X, I remember when we made Hangout, you know, I, lo- I, I remember when he was recording his verse, I was like, what the fuck are you saying, dude? What are you speaking, you know? And, and, and he's been pushing, like, you know, he's, 
in the ballet thing for a very, very long time. So it's nice to see him, you know, getting getting his flowers. Yeah, shout outs to X Men and and he's one of those people who can literally rap in any language. Yeah. Like he'll come in, in Zulu, he'll come in, in the Bele, he'll come in in, in Tuana, and you're just like, dude, bro, how many languages do you speak? And he does it so eloquently. So I mm-hmm. think it's really dope that obviously because he isn't Debele, he's also then showing props to his nation, but they're also then showing the love back. So Yeah. Shout out to X Men. I think I got mad love for X always. I think he can speak about five to eight languages. Sorry, Dude. sorry. I'm saying South African, that one. South Africa, yeah. fully, fully South African, that Dude. one. <laughs> sorry. And then sorry another thing that's dope to, about that. Go on, go on, um, sorry, to, go on. sorry to cut you off there, because you spoke about how many languages uh, X speaks. There's a kid by the name Jimmy Landros. He's got a song called The New National Anthem. You must check it out. He raps in all South African languages. It's crazy. True. Yeah. You just- Jimmy Landros. Jimmy Landros, is that his tag on the Insta as well? Uh, um, I think so. I just, I just have the song. I heard the song. I'm not sure of his socials. I heard okay. the song as well because it was trending for a bit on Twitter. And it is wild for him to be able to switch flow to flow, literally still being able to keep it within the rhythm of the song, yeah. but then obviously changing languages. And that's what we feel like. That's the embodiment of South African hip hop. That's really dope. That's so shout fine. out to him. I was about to add with that... Uh, the 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 the, the Kidex Award. What's what? big about it is that the only other recipient of that award is Dr. Esther Mashang. So, um, if you look at what happened with Yanga, then you look at what happened with Stino Litwini, and then you look at what's happening now with Kidex, recognized in these 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 regal auspices and regal spaces of things. You know what I mean? Wait, like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. In his post, he says um, he's the second person to receive this word after Dr. Nontembi Mkwebani. No, I think it's Esther Mashangu, dog. Yeah, I'm, I'm reading this from the post right now. Okay. For real? Yeah. Yo, can, that's, can, that's, I, that's, can I put it out there? It's Esther Mashangu. Yes, bitch. Uh, let's just see when it drops now. We need the king to shout him out, okay? For the Zulu boy. Just putting it out. Just putting it out. Okay. Okay, Fiji. You're doing your job, Fiji. Okay. We see you. Okay. Yo, yo, yo. Let me, let me get that name again, uh, Speedy. Dr. Nontembi Mkwebani. Dr. Nontembi Mkwebani. I need to go, I need to go research that. I just automatically thought it was Esther. Yeah, yeah, I think we also automatically jump to Esther because she's gotten a lot of recognition for her work. So that's probably why it was a little bit automatic for you. But uh, maybe for that specific award that X got, it wasn't Esther Mashango. But Esther has gotten her flowers in her in her in her time and her space. So um, it's not anybody to kind of you know shy down on either. <laughs> you say Esther like she's afraid. <laughs> hey, Mom Esther. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Um, speaking of South Africans doing things in Vernac and and uh, making trends, there's also the kid um, who sold tea who dropped a tune called Ikyan Ikyan I Kechi. Immediately, I think I saw it also trending on Twitter, and I was like, "Who is this? Like, yeah. that point is fire." I recommend. For real? I promise you, I recommend people to go check it out. The visuals as well. I think that's what also sold me, just from the whole attire. And I'm like, yo. And this guy is just pulling it out in his closet. And I'm like, mm. yo, this is dope. It captures everything. Uh, for me, I was like, yo, I need to get this song and just download it and bump it fully, without a doubt. Yo, and it's just vibes the whole time. Like, sometimes you might even feel like maybe you don't understand what's going on, but you're still just like, okay. Now I'm mm. because, mm. you know, we're out here, we're feeling the vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's dope. <laughs> oh, man. South African hip-hop has definitely been doing some big things and also making some way. Hey, <laughs> nice one. I saw yesterday, Saturday, this past Saturday, um, Tito went to go get a quarter in the hood and visit Mugs. I saw that. And he, and he puts Mugs on, on his Insta stories like, yo, 
when the fuck are you coming back to Instagram? Because all your friends are bothering me. And Mags is like, soon. So, mm-hmm. hey, maybe he might make a comeback. Let's I'm sure Mags has got some material that we can hear. Yeah, yeah I'd love to hear so. Mags on the check. I know, um, damn, I don't know if I could be saying this, but I know he's on someone's album, the album, album that's coming like now. Yeah. In I, I, September. I know. I know he put out a song with Stogie and PH. I saw PH doing a preview of it. Mm. So look out for that. I think it's Max song featuring Stogie and PH. It really sounds hip hop. And the moment you just hear um, Max Makubani, it's Max Makubani. He hasn't changed yeah. nothing. It's just him. And you're just like, damn, Max will visit, will visit you. You know what I mean? Like, I hope you just hear more yeah. material from him coming through. Does, Max, anybody know, does, does anybody know why he took a little bit of a step back with regards to hip hop? We'll ask, we'll ask all those questions as soon as he releases one song. So I'm getting the interviews. As soon as you're in Ghana, I'm back. <laughs> what I, I do think... love is, 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 you know, Tito and Muggs are no spring chickens, you know? Mm. But they look really good. You know what mm. I'm saying? It's very seldom in the game, especially in the, not just hip-hop, but in entertainment, when people have been gone for a certain time and they come back with all their ears and eyes and their face with no scratches, you know, and still looking like Norman was Pilela, was Jongile. So I like the way they're taking care of themselves and they, they still have that youthful exuberance. But hey, Bangara, this is track anytime. Yeah, 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 you, you 100% right. I think it, it was, SA Hip Hop was quite interesting like this past week. There was a lot going on. I mean, I saw um, Big Zulu signing the Spitz deal with Cavella. Yo, yeah. You know, which I thought like, shit, that's really, really dope to, to I think for, for, for managers, you know, like artist managers, um, I think it's very important for them to understand that not all artists are the same. So you don't have to, you don't have to uh, try and get the same brands for your artist as a, another person, you know. It, you, you really should look for things that are tailored to, to, to their being, you know, and I think um, uh, Big Zulu has done a really, really good job um, from being a hip-hop artist to being a tailored hip-hop artist and now um, getting these deals. So, yeah, man, I thought that was cool. I remember, like, Cavella, I'm from the Val, you know, so Cavellas were, like, a big thing. Like, I wore I, Cavellas to Africa. school. <laughs> eh? All over South Africa, Chief. Cavella, Cavella. And, uh, you know, walk up. Yeah. I remember I used to wear Cavellas all the time, even to school. And the one, the one day I went to a, 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 a dot three party back in the day with my brother. And he was, he didn't tell me, he was like, dude, don't like, what are you, what are you wearing? And I was like, what? Like I had like a Daniel Hector shirt, Levi's, <laughs> Cavellas. I was like, what do you mean? What am I wearing? Like I'm swagging right now. He's like, okay, <laughs> you'll see what I mean when we get to the party. And we got to the Dothy party and it was this hip hop party. I remember that's the first time I saw like sugar specs for the first time. And I was like, holy fuck, everybody's wearing like J's and uh, these S cakes, Squatter Camp Kappas at the time. Here I am with a Daniel Hector shirt and, uh, and, and Cavellas. <laughs> you know? But um, they hold like a very legendary and very special moment in my life. No doubt. Oh, and he also he also just had the br- video where you saying something. Yeah, I was saying I was saying um Spister's always been a pantola, clearly. Nah, nah, I was not pantola, I was just a soccer kid. <laughs> oh. I wasn't a basketball kid, I was a soccer kid. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way a skateboarder can be a pantola. And back to Big Zulu. I think and you're correct. All the endorsement, the deals that he's had actually fits his brand correctly. I think it's one of those, he's not going for the bag. Well, he is going for the bag, but he's like, yo, I'm going for something that fits me, that communicates who Big Zulu is to the game. And which is perfect mm-hmm. for me, Brentwood, to Cavella. Next thing we know, Vela Soti is, let's see, uh, what is it, Quantum. You never know. It's one of those things that he could be like, yo, Quantum, yeah. you add Toyota. I'm sure he owns Dexys already, wherever he is. He does. Consortium, exactly. Consortium, you might take it. The next thing, uh, VG is um, Yinile Amacheu. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I remember. Didn't they have Java on the advert for 
uh, for my not my show, it was in commas. In commas. Yeah. 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 I know Zola Zola got a deal with in commas last year. Mm. Zola's, Zola's also got a billboard or uh, a yeah, pool brand in Soweto. Pool brand, yeah. Another know, brand spending some money with hip hop is Huawei. You see, everybody's yeah. promoting those watches. Uh, uh, they got their top tier people that they are promoting the phones with. Obviously, I think that's multi uh, dimensional in terms of the entertainment arts, but they really have looked at these young kids coming up, like Abo, Jay, Marley. They looked at Rolene. Um, I, those are the two people that I've seen really pushing the watches on the socials. Nice. Casper with Clay, getting that. That, that was dope as well. That was dope. That's really, really dope. Yeah. Something, something that left a little bit of a sour taste in people's minds uh, was um, Nikon just recently uh, announced their brand ambassadors, and all the ambassadors seem to be like, these white people who work in agencies, majority possibly even in Cape Town, they might even be in Joburg, but obviously not recognizable. I'm not really worried about the fact that they're not recognizable, but we're the black faces who yeah. are also photographers who are using your products. And the only person they have on there is Austin Malema. And if you look at the, the footage and the promo footage that they posted on Twitter, Austin doesn't even say anything. They literally just show his face just to say, okay, we've also got a black person here. Don't wild on us. But all the white people, People have got like plenty to say, and Austin Jeb, I'm showing a young Kim Yonyana at the end of the video, and it's like, how? Oh, but are you doing him a favor, or is he really an ambassador, or what's your communication with regards to this brand? Yeah, I think I was having a conversation with a friend last night, you know, and we were saying that like the nice thing is that like our kids, like the new generation, they really, really gonna be proud of being black. I think we spoke as as people that had white friends for the whole time, and you sometimes feel like there's certain things you don't want to say they may be uncomfortable or maybe you feel like it's not necessary to to kind of you know um, be loud about your blackness but i think in this day and age and especially right now like i said earlier it's like yo where are the black faces you need those black faces you need a black strategist because clearly what you guys are doing there is not working for us and 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 i think prior would let these things slide but now it's like no we rather have three black faces maybe even a cut face or an indian face you can't just have white faces and that's what it is mm. 2020 moving forward that you can't just have a white face then but i agree with 100 percent, speedy it's been a cry throughout a long long time guys because if, if this thing is south african they need to represent south africa as a whole regardless of whatever you can't just have one black person and have 20 other white people and that's it it doesn't represent south africa at all whoever proved that in jail now, I, mean, I wouldn't just say, what are you thinking? Because at the end of the day, you are going to get backlash from social media or from the public to say, yo, but your brand is not fully representing what South Africa holds. I, I, I am with you also, VG. And, and, and it's also, you know, when, when we cry about these things, we also have to realize that these people, most of them might not even take us seriously and hear our cries and do something about it. But we have to find a way whereby we like, once we've cried and you haven't done anything about it, we need to do something about it. So black people stop using Nikon. It's just that simple. Mm. It's, it's really like we need to invest our money, hard earned money in places and brands that give things back to us. And we're not, you, we're not asking for charity, but we're asking that you do right by the black face in there so that that black face can be an example and hopefully get more black faces in there. But if they don't do that, like stop, we need to stop using certain shit, boycotting certain shit. The power is in that unity. And it's not like we can't go to another camera place. We can. And when those things start happening, when you start hitting people in their pockets, that's the only time they're going to feel you and hear you. If we're not going to use our unity and we're just going to complain about it, they'll never do anything about it. It's so yeah. sad. It's mad. <laughs> it's it's sad. Yeah, it's also painful. And I, and I think also even for some of the like young and up and coming type of photographers, I mean, we speak about them all the time. Um, Creative Corner, I mean, um, Young Stilo, you've got um, all these photographers who are doing big things, especially for artists in South Africa, because a lot of artists travel with photographers for their footage for, for, um, for 
um, Instagram or whatever the case may be. Those are the people who we are investing in to make sure that they have the right equipment. So at the end of the day, it's also affecting us because it's like how Namia want my photographer to have the right equipment so that we can move in the right spaces. If it also is an opportunity for my photographer to get um, an ambassadorship, I want them to get the right ambassadorship because it also then filters through to my brand. So, you know, these things are not, are not matching up. Yeah. yeah. Maybe, maybe also the photographers need to look at having managers as well. Yep. Because we mentioned yep. you have a manager. So the photographers need to start saying, okay, now I'm going to manage who you guys will go through for the bookings and who will go find me these deals to break things. Maybe it's simple as that. 100%. You're damn right. I have said to young Stilo, I've asked him, but he says it's pretty hard in, in the photography, especially in the young kids' realm, to get managers or. or, or, or but I have asked him, like, and he knows, you know, they they they, they got to get some managers. But I think you're 100% spot on. <clears throat> they need to have people that look out for their interests. But I wanted to talk about the Casper thing and the play thing. It's very seldom, not, not, not seldom, because we haven't been through a pandemic before. But to also snatch a bag during quarantine says a lot about your brand power. Mm-hmm says a lot about hip-hop because they could have spent the bag anywhere else guys yeah they could have especially now that we're not on the the, the rams like we used to be they could have pianos killing it but they chose a hip-hop artist who's cast on your vest and that says a lot about his brand power and for a brand to spend with us during these times shout outs and uh big ups yeah. to him for that man and it's not big ups to give money away during this time yeah, and big ups to him for being on Idols this past um, weekend because that's also a big deal for South African hip-hop, you know? Yep. yep. He's the first hip-hop artist to be a judge, is to, he not? To be a yeah. judge. I, th I think so, yeah. Yeah, Casper's always been about the bag. He's always been about making moves. And I think that's one thing we can always commend him for because he knows exactly how to move. His team knows exactly how to move to get him the bags, to get him to where he needs to be. So I think like the way that they've, they've structured... The Casper train is, I've, yeah. always, well, I've always been an awe, so shout out. I saw no him in the studio. He's Big up Tilly. Yeah, he's been posting that he's in the studio, and I saw that he's with something so weird too. Like for me, that just left me like, damn. I want shout out to Casper, eh? Any minute from now. It was actually... I actually, I actually had a conversation even with um, T. Lee. I hope he doesn't get mad at me for this. But um, <laughs> I had a conversation with T. Lee recently and I was asking him, I was like, okay, you know, a lot of people right now aren't releasing music or they're a little bit too scared to release music because it's COVID, it's lockdown. People aren't necessarily able to um, promote the music the traditional way of going to events, going to festivals, getting the people rocking to the music. So what's the thinking behind Casper actually dropping still in September? And he's like, yo, Casper's an artist. So he wants his music out. His music is going to come out. So Tilly has had to sit and actually mm -hmm. put together like a plan, mm -hmm. a digital plan for him to make sure that the album still lives, mm -hmm. even though he's not going to perform it to people in, in a physical space, but rather you'll still be be able to enjoy it and consume it the way that you still would as a Casper fan. So I like the fact that Tilly's thinking that far for him to still say, okay, the album's coming out. We can't just drop it and say, okay, sharp, there you go. There's still another plan to say, okay, now we're changing direction. We need to adapt to what's happening right now. And that's forward thinking. That's what we need to be doing. You know? I love that too. Uh, also now, um, I also was thinking about that, Noni, like, ish. I wonder how like people are going to promote and I think also it's going to be quite important. Is it important what you say in the music during this time? Definitely. Yes. I think it's important what you yes. say. <laughs> but even more but, so now because people are sitting and listening. Sure. I think it's, it's always been important what you say in the music, right? Mm. That's, that's, that's what we always adapt to. That's what people or your, your, true, your true followership say, yo, what you said to me means something here. I think for them, mm. it's the marketing. It's saying, cool, so we don't have the shows, but maybe we can build our own mm. show to, to promote this thing. Cool, we don't have to move physicals the way we do, but maybe we can move music in this certain way, in this direction. So it's just the figure out and the thinking of saying, cool, let's not think 2020. We're thinking 2021, 222. 
I got you. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I really, uh, really want to see where he's going to take, where, where all the artists are going to take the messaging. Shane Eagle's also recording something. Saw him working on something. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interested to find out like, what a body of work is going to sound like during these times. Mm. What's also cool, though, is that um, the, the, the artists are still not sitting back. They're still working on the music because they understand at some point they still need to be able to release the songs and the music. Um, but also the fact that they're taking the music into their own hands and they're owning their own music. So um, MT, for instance, has uh, registered MT Records. He's just signed a new artist by the name of Flashy Kumkane. He's got a brand new song called Mfuzi. I played it um, on the Trap House this past weekend. And it's really dope. It's sounding fresh, very South African, very MT. And I understand why he signed him. Because he's got that flavor that MT had when he first came out. You know that Zulu trap. But you're like, okay, what's happening here? So, you know, I did the fact that the guys even though that they've left their label they've still said we still want to spread the love and make sure that other artists kind of get the 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 recognition that they deserve in the game you know yeah bo and then another label was also started yes another label so it was um you mentioned it it's java and it's java yeah. and raf raf who used to produce for mt during his ambitious days the label is called 1020 and I'm proud. I'm proud. 1020 Cartel, Virgin, eh? Cartel, yeah. 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 I just, I, I like it when people are not afraid to start from scratch. I like it when people are not afraid to do things for themselves. And I like it when people show through actions that they've learned their lesson. Because it was going to be weird if he left that label with having a bt award and being such a an artist he could start his own thing we would accept it if he if he signed with another label but somewhere somehow guys we're gonna have to cultivate this industry by ourselves we can't keep leaving the work to other people and when you see artists like us java nabo mt doing what they are doing it's nice because it shows that okay the future of this game is going to be run by people who have learned by walking in this game. Well, it's, it's been happening, right? If you, if you, even if you trace it back to the likes of Casper, um, you understand, where Casper was with yeah. the WHP, or WHP actually signed Casper, yeah. where Pro Kid actually signed yeah. the red buttons, where KO or Take Us My Easy, they actually said, yo, let's form a thing. What I love about that, is that they're opening up doors for the younger generation to come in and yeah. they're probably placing yeah. them right to say, dude, this is how you move, this is how you do it. I've learned my way, but I'm willing to invest my money in you so you can also break bread and open up doors for other coming people. You understand? So yeah. I think it's growth for the game, definitely, yes. But the most important thing is I just want to see what impact it's going to have. Already, the rollout that they had was really impactful. You know what I mean? I can't wait yeah. to hear the music. I can't wait to hear the music. Yeah. And then and they also want to see, like, yo, what huge impact are they going to have in the game just to shift the climate a bit because that's really needed. Yeah. And I, I also I agree, I agree with you that it's been happening. I just uh, wanted to, I wanted it to happen with these new artists. I wanted yeah. them to really that they are the future no one else is gonna come save us if they are the future yeah speaking of new artists and and um people in the game sort of putting people on and giving them an opportunity i remember when um dimples took it upon himself to just try and promote faith k's career you know um i'd say for the past two or three years so I saw she got a deal with Warner the other day um, through PH. So it's really, really dope to see that, you know, um, Dimples could help her to a point where she can now get assisted even more. Mm. That's big. 
Yeah, and and I think their their intention with that also is to kind of push it globally. It's not necessarily only just going to sit in South Africa. So um, it's nice to see that a South African leg or a label is also then trying to push their artists to other territories and not necessarily just kind of sticking it to South Africa. So yes, you're right. Big ups to Dimples for putting in the initial work because he saw the talent and then got her to a point where she actually got signed by Warner. So we need a lot more of that, you know. Mm. Yeah, the most, the most mm. With, with Fred K, ne? or PH, because I've seen the growth, right? She's been messing with a few producers and whatever. But I think yeah. PH is the person that actually captured her the best. When I was like, yo, who did this? And it's PH. And I was like, this is the correct direction because I think she's yeah. actually found herself with the music and the pace. And shout out to them for making that move, man. They so they, P- they, they, they tonga, right? Yeah. So, yes. Hey, Limpopo. Hey, Limpopo. Limpopo been killing it this month, eh? Hey, yeah. Limpopo's been hard. They don't, they don't want to stop. They want to say, hey, Melanie's born in IIT. Yeah, Faith. Uh, Faith. I mean, I've heard a lot of Faith K um, songs. Um, she did drop her album two years ago. If you ask me my personal opinion, I'd say it wasn't the right thing to do then. Yeah. Um, but um, of late, the two songs that I think are really really dope the one main song i'd say is that that jomosono champ song you know and that's where she raps in tonga back to what you're saying vg where she ph is really bringing out you know the 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 authentic and the the homeness out of her (laughs) i think ph PH definitely has this thing where he's able to kind of get the best out of the artist he's working with. I mean, he did that especially. I think his relationship with Cooley, for me, was one of the best because he was able to get the best out of Cooley during that time for them to make a Lost in Time type of album. He, he did it as well where he worked on Shoma Josie's album to the point where Shoma Josie won some summer awards. And now he's doing the same with Faith K. So PH is one person we really need to look at to then say, hey, he needs to he needs to be given his flowers and he needs to be you know in a better position in the in the, in the culture i think yeah. you know hopefully one can hire him and he can be Tweezy, the guy but we'll Tweezy see. said the same <laughs> thing about maraza he said you know like i want you to know that you're you're a, you're a legend dog you know i i want to tell you that you're a legend in case someone else isn't oh, one who says the same thing to maraza Tweezy. yeah maraza's fucking amazing and what he's doing at home uh with his home studio i don't know what he's going to be doing exactly but i think uh he's he's one dude that is just always creative and he's always able to stretch what he has yeah uh, speaking of omar raza so let me throw it to durban and that's what i love about durban there's something there that allows these guys to just think outside the box another guy that has openly said Yes, I'm a musician, I'm hip-hop, I'm not the best artist. I won't even lie to you guys. So don't think when I promote what I'm doing, when you guys say, ah, but you whack or whatever, you're making fun of me because you're not. I understand that I'm not the best artist, but I'm going to do my thing. And the guy I'm talking about is A1 Wolf. A1 is a lawyer by profession. He used those smarts to work with his brother and they promoted Run TV and Gigs in Durban, after that, he just should, studied law. He's not a lawyer profession. He just studied law because remember, after you study law, you still got to do articles, you got to do board exams, you got to get accepted as a lawyer. That. No, he studied law. Then remember, he got he got signed to JR. I don't, I don't know he got signed to JR back in the day. Yeah. I thought he passed. I thought he got everything. No, he, he did. He's got his degree, oh, but he doesn't have his. It's, it's, it's one thing having a law degree. It's one thing being an attorney. He do, his do, do, do you know what I mean? Okay, yeah. sure. Articles, boards. So, the way he converted that knowledge to ushering in talent from Durban, and then he did like series where he was shooting on his phone. He stepped away from the game. He was managing the warehouse. You know, um, also there's some discrepancy there whether he was a part owner or what, but I think he had shares. Because no. he said... He started, he started it, then he sold his shares. And he sold when, I, shares. when I spoke to him, um, he said that um, initially he had had the warehouse as an investment after making a bit of cash when, the, when the, the Wolfpack was still really, really moving hard. 
and he got that South Sea deal. And a lot of people don't know this. A1 Wolf got the same South Sea deal that Trevor Noah had back in the day. Sure. You know? Sure. Like, a lot of people don't know that. So, yeah. that's when he started the warehouse. But when I spoke to him, he, he was like, you know, he, he wanted to move away from music. He didn't feel like that was the kind of environment and space that he wanted to be in. But the business was still going. So, he just sold it and, 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 and went on to live his zen life you know that's 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 what he does he's he's more about going for a hike with his girlfriend and going so on holiday cool. you know and that brings peace to him you know and as when i spoke to him about this it was when he dropped the song about i don't want to be a cool kid you know and if you listen to that song he tells you about all of that he says i don't want to be an, an ordinary artist that has to do the same things as everybody else yeah and that's the thing again you know it's just like I like how they go into the alternative route of shit. Uh, so now he's come back. He says he's going to release some music, but I'm more interested. I, I, I'm really impressed with what he's doing on his socials with the content that he's doing. So I don't know if he's bought a new house or what, but he started giving us uh, a glimpse of what he's building when he built a home theater. You know what I mean? This is a guy who has a home theater in his house, living in Durban. A lot of people might think, oh man, you gotta be super rich to do this or whatever. And it just shows how we can stretch things. Then he comes up again and I see him painting and building inside his house, renovating his house. And then he showed us a studio that he's built. And these things look amazing. And now all of a sudden he's got this day planner that is in hologram form. And this, I'm just like, yo, this nigga's mind yeah. is just. And yeah, it's he's always great. been like that. Very. Yeah, shout out to everyone, man. You know? I think everybody kind of needs to think in that direction as well, because we have all of these things accessible to all of us. Yep. And if we're not kind of investing in, in building something at home, because we're going to be at home for a long time, then you're playing games with yourself. You're playing games with your money. You can't be out there still shopping and buying sneakers when you could be investing in your craft and mm. making sure you're building that at home. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Up, yeah, man. yeah. You wanted to speak about Kule and Gubani and the skate movement is going on and that he's got going on in Durban. Yes, so I got to thank you for this because um, we went to that. You took me, you and Les took me to the skate park, shot some visuals. And then because your, uh, the phone always is listening to you <laughs> and always watching you, all of a sudden on my Explorer page. <laughs> my skaters, my old Just friend. skaters. My skaters popped up on my Explorer page. <laughs> so uh, I, I tapped into one who is uh, Kule Ngubane. And I already saw you already on the likes there, you know? Yeah. And I was really happy about that because, you know, a lot of dudes who are outside of Joburg, a lot of people in Joburg don't support a lot of people outside of Joburg. Yeah. Cool is my dude. Yeah. When I saw you already liking a plethora of his posts, I was like, fuck, I love what Speedy's doing here. And I followed him and, I've, uh, and then I checked him doing a... a a program for young kids, young skaters in Durban. It's yes. called Squat Deep Empire. Yes. And to see him with these young kids and skateboards and it's uh, various colors, you know, it's not just black kids. I was like, again, everybody always thinks you need backing from corporates. Everybody always thinks you need a million rand. You need to have that nice car out there. You need all these things to start doing something. And he's just a testament of no nigga, just do what you want to do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kule, Kule is, he's, he's an amazing person Yo. all around, you know. And, and one thing I can tell you about skateboarding, because it works with so many parts of your body and mind, you know, you got to think about staying balanced. You got to think about popping on to get, to, you got to get off. There's so many things which teach you life skills and, 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 the nice thing about it, it's not like music. You don't need the millions, like you're saying. Just seeing the smile on those kids' faces. Because he's really good. He gets paid to skate, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and, and for those kids, when they're skating with him and they're rolling and they're shooting clips, uh, there's a magazine, a South African skateboard magazine. It's called Session Magazine. That's like the biggest magazine we have. And you see Session Magazines posting all these kids. That, that you, 
what that does to those kids is, is something I can't even explain. When they go home and they say, mom, dad, I was skating with Kule. Look at this, you know? Even as a parent, you're able to be like, shit, you know, um, the skateboarding thing may seem a bit dirty and what and what, but you guys are just, you know, you, you, yes, you're in the streets, but you're not in the streets doing drugs and doing all kinds of fucked up shit. You're using your brain, you're using your mind, you're using your body for, for something that's positive and it can really, really help you. So, yeah, man, skateboarding is, is, is I, I can go on for days, but Kule, amazing person inside and out. And he's a rapper too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So him and I, because we, we're like really good friends, you know, and, and he always says to me, he's like, dog, you know I'm a rapper, but I, I don't want to come in like that. You might, you're friends, you know, so... He doesn't want to pay me his music. He doesn't, you know, like when we're chilling, we have our own relationship. But um, I always listen to his music because he posts his music on his, on his skate clips or whatever. And I do try and share um, my, 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 my little bit of advice or what I think um, here and there. So, yeah. Just um, the... Sorry, sorry, so, go. Okay, well, I, I think I was going to, I was going to off ramp a little bit. Before you off ramp. Before you off ramp. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to add on to what Speedy was saying. So I think uh, you, Speedy, and uh, before you popped up and gone back to skating, I definitely would say Soweto Skate Society. I think you guys have done a real great job of bringing skateboarding back into the fold. Oh, yeah. Triple S and especially. Triple S especially, right? Like, like I was saying, before you, it was them, you know? Mm. Um, and then because you have live, you have 5 million people looking at you every day, you take those viewers onto your Instagram and then they see you skating. Yeah. Uh, that also, you know what I mean? It just blows things up crazy. Yeah. So a shout out to that. Oh, yeah. And then uh, in terms of talking about intelligence, it's a scientific proven fact that skaters are some of the most smartest people in the world. Uh, because of that, they have to use both sides of their brain. Sorry. It's, it's proven that skateboarding and skateboarders are the people that use uh, the most of the both sides of their brains. Yep. Wow. I'm yeah. it's, it's very good for you. Like, I don't even know how to explain. <laughs> and then, before you off-ramp again, Cosmo, just one more thing. VG, you wanted to say something? I'm going to start skating. <laughs> come. Please come to That's the Skate Hub. You know, yeah, um, what I'm really trying to have at the Skate Hub is, um, I don't know if you've, if you've seen on your algorithm, Scoop, a lot of females, young Ooh. South African females, really, really are into skateboarding, you know? Um, I mean, <clears throat> I, had, I had two parents now that called me, um, that I work with at Metro FM, are like, yo, okay, the one said her son, the one said her daughter would love to come to the skate park when it opens, you know? So that's, that's something I really, really, really want to push because the, the, the lady skateboarding scene is, is, is on the come up even more than like the, the football. You know how football in South Africa, the lady scene is kind of, the skateboarding is, is, is doing, bit, well, it's getting even better than the, the, the football. I, I have seen that on my algorithm and I think that's crazy, you know? <laughs> Again, sticking to skating, another reason why I love it and it's because when you are a skater, you cannot be afraid of falling. And that symbolically in life has a great, it has a great resonance and a symbolism because a skater, skaters are always people that are willing to try things because their sporting code already teaches you, you can at any time, no matter how good you are, you can still break a bone and fall. And that's a great lesson to learn in life and to just walk with in life because people just are scared of doing things because they are scared to fall and are scared to be seen as a failure. Whereas yeah. in skating, you just have to already enter that skating arena knowing that I could fail no matter how good I am. And that's yeah. dope. You could, you could try a trick for a whole hour. You could try a trick for a whole month, but you don't stop trying it until you land it. Do you understand what that does for your mind? Yeah, that's crazy. Okay, sorry, Cosmo. We've, we've embellished on skating. I see Vijay. Just had a, <laughs> Vijay's like, get hey, full sack, man, you're skateboarding. Um, no, no, no. I just wanted to touch on the fact that um, Speedy had mentioned that the uh, Kule didn't want to kind of use his relationship with Speedy to then say, yo, we're homies, so here's my music. Please bump it on the radio. And there was, it was very interesting. I saw an interview with uh, Ghana and... Um, young thug who kind of have the same relationship. Apparently Ghana was in studio for like almost a year or maybe a year and a half with young thug in studio. And 
Young Thug never knew that Ghana could actually rap until later he actually gave him a chance. He was like, yo, bro, why did you know me? tell me you were so dope? And obviously then signed him to the label and that's how he actually came under YSL, which I then wanted to throw back to Scoop because Scoop wanted to chat about... Um, quality control and how Migos have their own label and now they're also having their um, few issues especially even because I, I know Lil Baby even complained about some issues that he's having with quality, quality control and how to kind of manage that just as an artist, not necessarily as an American but just, you know I caught wind of this uh, when I saw it on the socials of course saying that Migos has a lawsuit against QC I thought it was fake news because the relationship that the Migos and QC always portray is always like 100, 1,000. Okay, I let it die for some time. And then it came back. And apparently the problem is Migos have the same lawyer as QC. Mm. Uh, you understand? So th when, they, when Migos had someone go through the books for them they realize that they might be getting skimmed off a couple of million dollars and obviously because uh it's a conflict of interest when you have the same person representing the label because that person the label makes more money than you so obviously this guy's paycheck 60 percent of it is coming from the label so who's this guy going to look after more than you the label so a lot of times it has happened that labels even have uh, managers. You cannot be managed. It happened with Lil Wayne, where Baby was the label and the manager. It happened with Drake as well. That's why Drake had to change a couple of things. Um, so I wanted to appeal to artists because I can see now there's a lot of signing happening in South Africa. And it's not just happening on a South African level. It's going to be happening on an international level, you know? So guys must be very aware that you cannot have someone representing your interest and that same person representing the label's interest at the same time. That won't happen. It won't end up for your good. It won't end up for your benefit. So if you sign to the label, then you need to have a manager outside of the label, have an accountant outside of the label, have a lawyer outside of the label so that you are sure that your interest is always looked after as an artist. But what happens in the case where Scoop, you've invested money in this particular artist, right? I invest 100,000 rands in Scoop, but I know that through music, only 10,000 will come back. How am I going to get my 90,000 back? No, but oh. Gigi, that's not the conversation. The conversation is no, no, not yeah, about, yeah. About, yeah. about management and, and your investment back. The conversation here is about the artists need to make sure that they are separately represented from the label. So right. if you as the label want to invest your money into me as the artist, that's fine. We are having the conversations through our two separate lawyers. We can't have the same person representing both of us. Okay, cool. Okay. If you That's what I was lawyer, saying. You get it. Okay, the lawyer part. Okay. I got it. I thought you were saying your record label cannot also represent you with management because I was going to say, but I think in this day and age, with management as well, you're going to try to get as much money or of your investment back. No, look, look VG, I'm not saying the, the, the record label cannot make their money back. Mm. To make sure that you are looked out for because the label is going to look out for its interest. So as an artist, whether you're going to have to talk to someone who's going to be your manager or your lawyer and on a pro bono basis so that when you do make it, you're going to pay them back or whatever. I'm saying as an artist, it's always good for you to have representation outside of the label. Mm. Okay, I hear you. Yeah. It's the same. It's, it's, it's the same as saying like even though you're signed to whatever whatever label have the t have the team approve everything but also have your own kind of pa doing your invoices don't let your label head do your invoices for your shows you know Perfect. because they're gonna they can say scoop is a hundred thousand and pay you twenty thousand sure can you Same that's thing. a big point that's a big point speedy can you please again say that that's a very big point because it has happened to artists yeah so 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 long story cut short 
um, I'm not saying don't trust people, but it's better to be hands on with your business or with whatever you're doing. So have your label, whatever, but then also have your person that approves everything. Don't just sit and know that, okay, I've got 10 gigs this month. Um, I know I charge 50,000 for one. Um, but I'm using an artist as an example. Um, and I know, I know that whoever does the admin is going to go in invoice 50,000 because 80% 80 of the time they invoicing 80,000 and giving you 50,000. So have, have, have someone that is, and I think that the easiest way to do it is to always be copied in all communication. So mm. if your manager is your label, whoever speaking, make sure you are copied in those emails. And also you as an artist, yes, focus on your trade, but just take an hour out your day when you wake up to go through your email. So you know everything that's happening in your business. Mm. That's dope. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I think we've dropped uh, more than enough knowledge for the day. Uh, yeah. And we'll be back again next week, Tuesday. Um, oh, I think- it's mm. a quick one. We're not going to dwell on it. And also, we never speak about international things, but you guys spoke about Migos. Yeah. So I just wanted to say that it, I find it so crazy that Jay wrote Still Dre. And he wrote That's both verses. Yeah, the whole Remember, song. Snoop said he didn't write Lazy shit. Lazy wrote both for Snoop and he wrote for, for Dr. Dre. Snoop yeah, said... No, Scoop. I mean, Snoop uh, uh, spoke about it in his verses that he did yeah. with uh, with with DMX. Yeah, no, I did cover that. I did know I that. that. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, I didn't Jay- know that. I didn't know that. Jay Z is a problem, guys. Jay Z is a problem. He's <laughs> <laughs> not always been that nigger, you know. He's yeah. a problem. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> uh, that's all I wanted to say. You, you must find out the story of how they, how he got to write Still Dre. So just go find out the whole story before and just say, because it's just a puzzle of beats, but just Google it and research it. You'll see how it actually got to Dr. Uh, to wasn't Jay-Z. Snoop supposed to write it, but it wasn't slapping? No, 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 no. Okay. It wasn't supposed to write it. So there's a whole story where it was a shopping of beats, but someone picked up the beats and said, yo, here's a beat. What can you do? Next day, boom, boom. It's, yeah. I don't want to die. Yeah. 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 Sure. Yeah, we're going to get music from you. Me? Yeah. Yeah, I'm dropping next month. I'm about to drop. I've got, I've got shit ready. But let's, just before we go, let's speak about some new uh, music releases. Uh, yeah. So the exclusive released um, a brand new uh, EP. It's called G-Pop Genius. So go check it out. I played one of the songs on the show, on my radio show this past weekend. Uni Rams, I had him on my show this past weekend. He just dropped his new yeah. one called Shy. Um, well on also, charts. really, really nice. And he, yeah, was number one on, on, on the charts um, internationally, which is, um, uh, I think, a pretty, pretty uh, big deal. And then I saw, I found it a bit strange, but after I listened to the song, I was like, okay, I can accept it. Um, my new world star has now come back and done a, a Nalingi remix. Mm. with java and the guys so i just found it odd because nalingi is almost two years old now i mean he's dropped the whole album but yeah yeah, i guess i kind of get it so yeah i don't get it but i can accept it too it's 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 a it's long Mm. it's a long way away you know but is the song dope the song is dope that's why i was like okay (laughs) (laughs) we'll take it (laughs) yeah 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 that's about it Myself. Have you guys heard Muzi? Yes. Not Muzi, Muzi. Muzi M-U-Z-I. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he's nominated coming. at the Summers. Mm. He's coming with the heat. And then there's also another guy that I, I saw on the socials. There's a new wave of sound coming, guys, up in Zansi, that, that is just doing its own thing. There's a nigga called Espacio Dios. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's signed to Muzi. Yeah. yeah. He's yeah. trying to do the same management as well, or record label, yeah. 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 They're just coming with some other alternative festival heat yeah. from the left side there. That's why coming in hot there. That's one thing I can appreciate about being friends with Until Until. Because even like as much as Dio's, Shaz put me on, you know. So Until Until, they're constantly doing festivals and constantly yeah. doing so many different events. So they're constantly looking 
for new talent, new acts. Yeah. And they always, they always put me on like, yo, go listen to this. <laughs> so what are they up to now until, until, damn. I mean, they, they focusing on the agency side of things. They're doing really, really well. Um, strategies, that kind of a thing. Yeah. And I guess, yeah, working on holiday club for next year. Hopefully that'll happen. Showcase. Hopefully it will happen because that was the last big group I went to this year. So he <laughs> locked down his mochi. <laughs> how, how, how is your how is your how is your non-alcoholic ciders? Hey. <laughs> Listen, anything is nice when you're paid. Anything is nice when you're paid, Scoop. And that's why we're gonna wrap it up now. <laughs> Yeah, See you. Okay. Come to Ayala, and I gotta go. I gotta shoot. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank Bye. you, guys. Nice one.